Yo, Freddy King Army, do you guys want safe, cheap and reliable coins? If you do, make sure to go and check out u7buy.com. They sell coins and players on all platforms, PS4, PS5, Xbox, PC, whatever you need, coins, players, for your ultimate accounts to get those high ranks and champs. Make sure to go and check out u7buy.com and use King for a cheeky 5% discount on your order. Link is in the description. Hello guys, it's Freaking here and welcome back to the channel guys. It seems absolutely ages since I last made an actual YouTube video. It's obviously been a lot of streams recently on the channel. But we are back today with a video and what a video I have planned for you boys. Today what we've got is an England 2020 Euros tier list, alright? So we're going to be rating all the players. Obviously, most of you boys will know what way tier lists work anyway. Basically, there's five categories and we're going to be putting all the players, all 20, uh, 26 players in the, in, the, in the squad. And of course, Gareth Southgate into the tier list uh, obviously this is only in my opinion i'm sure it'll spark some debate in the comments uh, and obviously get your opinions down on, on rate, rate my ratings essentially you know what what do you think of the way I'm, I'm rating the players on their obviously performances in euro 2020 this is the england 2020 euros tier list enjoy boys right then boys so it is time to start this ratings off so first player in the list is going to be yep jude bellingham now obviously jude bellingham absolute baller he is such a player but um in terms of the year 2020 I, you know he's just average because i mean i think he, he only got a few minutes in the tournament he didn't play much didn't start any games um which i would have liked him liked uh to have seen him uh, do but he didn't unfortunately but he did get a few you know a few minutes in certain games come on as a sub did all right you know he always does himself proud when he's out there so for jude bellingham probably just an average for him i can't really give him anything more but he certainly wasn't poor because you can't judge him you know, a young 18 year old lad playing, you know, in the England first team. You can't judge him when he wasn't getting any game in game time, you know what I mean? Worth talking about. So, you, you know, average is all I can put him for there. Right, next off, we have Calvert Lewin. Calvert Lewin, another average for me. Um, there's going to be quite a lot of averages in this because a lot of players that you'll find in the England team, they are good players for the clubs, but, you know, they're maybe not top echelon that they're going to get in the team for Gareth Southgate to pick. So, they're going to be sub options like Calvert Lewin. I mean, obviously, Harry Kane. Uh, and we'll talk about Harry Kane later because I obviously thought he had a poor tournament. Um, let me know what you always thought as well. But um, Harry Kane's, you know, the captain. He's always going to start every single game as long as he's fit. So Calvert Loom is always playing second, second fiddle to him. Um, average again of Calvert Loom. Didn't do anything special. Did all right when he came on for the brief times he did, but nothing special. Next up we have Ben Chilwell. Ben Chilwell, uh, yeah, another, another very good left back. But the problem with it is, and we'll see as a United fan as well, we got. We've got a man, Shaberto Carlos, you know, playing. So, uh, obviously, Luke Shaw basically put Chilwell out of the team. Chilwell started the first game of the tournament against Croatia. And then I'm pretty sure after that, Shaw was in every game. So, Shaw put him out of the team. But yet again, Chilwell, not a bad tournament. Just average again. Nothing you can really do. Shaw put him out of the team. Shaw's just a better left back. Um, but Chilwell's certainly not bad. Um, you know, very, very good, ben uh, you know, backup option. Obviously, Champions League winner with Chelsea as well. So, yeah, very good option, but uh, I think, obviously, you can't give Chilwell any more than average because he only played one or two games in the tournament. We'll move in then to our next player, which is Connor Cody. Now, Connor Cody, yet again, you can't give him, you can't give him anything be better than average. He didn't do anything, so yet again, average. Um, yeah, that's all I can really say about Connor Cody. Not much to say there, average. Uh, next, we move into Phil Foden. Now, Phil Foden's interesting because I thought his first couple of games of the tournament... Um, Obviously, he was injured for the final. He couldn't play the final. Um, but the first couple of games, he played well. He nearly scored in the first game. Remember that post chance he had in the first game? Um, I feel like Phil Foden, though, not the tournament. I think, he, you know, everyone was expecting a little bit better from him. Um, obviously, coming off a title league win, a uh, league title win, obviously, with City as well this season. Um, Champions League finalists as well. Just wasn't really his tournament. I wouldn't give him poor. I'd give him average. But it just wasn't... It wasn't, you know, I think a lot of people expected more of Foden. Obviously, near, towards the end of the tournament, he wasn't even starting the games as well. Because, obviously, Saka, you know, kind of played, you know, broke through in the, in the quarterfinals and played really, really well. And that obviously kept his place all the way through to the final as well. So, that's kind of what put Foden out of the team. But, for, for Foden, I, you know, I'll just give him an average. Um, yeah, average for Foden. Nothing really more to say on that. Right, so next we've got Jack Grealish then. So, Jack Grealish, um, another player I have to give average to. Um... Not much to say on him, really. I think he should have got more game time in the tournament. There was games he came on and changed the game, coming off the bench for, for England. So, 
I don't really know why he wasn't starting a couple more games, but um, yeah, can only give him really an average on that. Out of his hands, like a lot of players here that just didn't get the game time that maybe we wanted to see or we maybe expected. So yeah, Grealish, yet again, average. Next up is Jordan Henderson. Now I feel like we're, don't worry, there will be other players in this. Well, we're, there will be, the, the more we get into this, there'll be more players that are spread out in the different the different categories. But another one that's average for Jordan Henderson. Um, yet again, came off the bench a few times for England. You know, obviously Rice and Phillips were the two that, that Southgate stuck with throughout the whole tournament. Um, started every game. So for Henderson, just average performance. He came on, did his job when he need, when need, when need be. But nothing special, so another average for Henderson. And Rhys James, the same to be fair. Rhys James, again, another average. Uh, nothing more to say on him as well. Yet another player that perhaps could have played a bit more. But then again, Kyle Walker had a very, very good tournament, as we'll discuss later. So Rhys James, he's a young lad. You know, he, he learned from experience. All the young lads like Bellingham as well. They learned from being experiencing just to be in the camp of an England team. In a, in, a, in a major tournament, so um, even though they didn't play much uh, or any uh, in the case of of of, uh, of uh, some of these players, but yeah, Rhys James yet again average. Right, Sam Johnston then. Sam Johnston will go with. Uh, he is just going to be another average yet again. Another average performance from him. Didn't play any of the games. Pickford was outstanding, as we'll discuss later again. Uh, yeah, Sam Johnston another average. Right, next one then, Harry Kane. Now Harry Kane is a purr in my in my opinion. Um, although he did, he had spells in certain games where he played well th throughout the tournament. But overall, his performances across the whole to the whole tournament was just not just under par from what you expect from Harry Kane. Um, and he's not in his own. There's other there's other players that you know I, I feel are poor for this tournament. But Harry Kane's certainly one of them. I just don't think he hit the heights. I don't know whether he's fully fit. I mean, even in the first couple of games, it was clear that you could kind of see the way he's playing. You didn't, have, you know, England didn't have a full, full, uh, fully fit Harry Kane, you know, at number nine. So, yeah, I feel for this one, Harry Kane, per tournament, but I'm sure he'll bounce back because he's he's a world class striker at the end of the day. Right, next one then, Harry Maguire. Now, Harry Maguire, boys, I think has to be as a surprise. Now, I'll, reason I'll reason I'll say it's a surprise, um, I'll put him in the surprise category is because Harry Maguire ended the injury, uh, ended the seat, ended the injury, ended the season with a injury for obviously he missed obviously the Europa League final as the Emmy United fan myself he missed the final for us uh, Europa League final against Villarreal so coming off the back of an injury to get fit again and play as well as he did in the Euros for England I mean as soon as he I think it was the second and third game of the group he played he only played one of the three good games uh, for England uh, in this tournament but as soon as he partnered John Stones you know, he looks such a better centre back than he does at club level for, for you know, alongside Lindelof for, for us. But yeah, Harry Maguire, a surprise for me because I thought this tournament was going to be one where he wasn't going to play a lot. Um, it certainly looked that way at the start of the tournament when he was injured for the first couple of games. As I say, he only played one of the three good games. So, you know what I mean? So, it certainly looked like it wasn't going to be a great tournament for him in terms of his injury. But the fact that he got back so quick from that injury um, and played the way he did in the tournament is a surprise for me. So... That is why I put him in the surprise section. Right then, so we've got next one is Tyrone Mings. I'm just going to be quick with these because I know I realise this video might be quite long, so I'm going to try and be quick with these. But Tyrone Mings is another average for me. Just he played the first game or two, I think. Yeah, he played he played the games that Maguire didn't in the group stage basically. Um, didn't did a good, did an alright job. Didn't do anything wrong. Um, obviously, you know Maguire is a better centre back than than Mings, and obviously once Maguire was fit, he was obviously going to take his place. But Mings for what he did. I think he had an average tournament. It was, it, he didn't make any mistakes, really. You know what I mean? He did his job when need be. So, yeah, average for Mings. Then we move into Mason Mount. Now, Mason Mount is another purr for me. Now, I think of Mason Mount, you know, look at the player that ended the season with Chelsea. Champions League winner. You know what I mean? You know, he put, it's just a great season for Chelsea all round, to be fair. And the way Tuchel took, took Chelsea over, um, they had a great season as, as a club. Mount was, uh, was you know, if, you know, one off, if not Chelsea's best player um, throughout the last couple of months of the season. I think we we're all expecting him to take that into the England team. Um, it didn't quite happen for him, unfortunately. He kind of went missing in a lot of the games. Um, yes, obviously, he's a good player. He, he has spells in games where he does okay, but generally, as an overall, because that's what we're looking at here, we're looking at an overall performance of the whole Euros. I have to say, Mount was a bit of a letdown. Um, just didn't really get in the tournament, didn't get into many games. He kind of disappeared. It was. Nearly as if England sometimes were playing with 10 players. He was, he just, it's not that he was awful, but it's just that he just went missing. You know, you expect Mount to get in the ball and keep creating the way the way he does for Chelsea, but didn't happen. 
didn't happen. He went missing in a lot of the games. Right, we're going to go Aaron Ramsdale. Now, Aaron Ramsdale, nothing against the guy, but I'm putting him in the waste of time category. Nothing to do with himself. Obviously, he didn't play a minute for England in the tournament. But I could have put, you know, and I will go on to Ben White because Ben White's going to be in this category as well. In fact, we'll put him in now as well. Where is he? There he is there. Ben White in the same. Now, I could also put Cody in this. But these, like, for, 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 for example, for Ramsdale, right, England brought four keepers to the tournament. Now, I know, obviously, Henderson got injured and was pulled out then off the tournament once he got injured. Um, so, we left him, obviously, with three. Pick for Johnston and Ramsdale. But why was Southgate bringing four keepers? You know, bring three. The attacking talent, the players he's left out, he could have had another space for another attacking player. Next one is Rashford. And Rashford's going into the poor category. Um, I love Rashford. Obviously, as a United fan, absolutely love him. But, um... Not his tournament. Um, similar to the way Maguire ended the season. Ended the season kind of injured. Um, obviously, he, he didn't look fully fit throughout the whole tournament. Um, you know, did all right in a few, couple of games where he, when he came on as a sub. But generally, not his tournament. Um, not much more to say, really. Calvin Phillips then, next. So Calvin Phillips obviously played the whole tournament. Had a, you know, next tournament, I think he started the tournament very well. The first game, played very, very well. He was man of the match against Croatia easily, in my opinion. Um, obviously... The two double pivot with partnered with Declan Rice. Um, Rice had a, yeah, or sorry, Rice, not Rice. Uh, Phillips had a mixed tournament. I'd just, I'd still keep him average. I think he had a good tournament, but um, he'd be more towards the surprise category if he if he continued what he did before from the first couple of games, Croatia, etc. But he dropped off a wee bit near the end, and I think people were starting to see when we watch England. You, you know, Rice and Phillips they're a bit too defensive. You want someone to break the lines and kind of. You know, drive forward with the ball. And Rice, to be fair, did that at times, but he's still more of a defensive midfielder. So, um, but for Phillips, didn't do anything wrong. I think he, he was, he's borderline, borderline um, good, but he's, I'll just keep him average for, for this, for the sake of this video. Now, we have Luke Shaw, or should I call him, Shaberto Carlos. We have Luke Shaw. He is going straight up to the world class category. Now, I don't want to see anyone disagreeing with this one. Surely everybody at this point sees. I mean, there's still people going around saying that Luke Shaw's fat, he's lazy, he doesn't have good defensive positioning, he's slow. Certainly for this tournament, world class for England. Creating, you know, just the, the just everything about his game. Going forward, going back, uh, his pace, he's up and down, his stamina, the, the ability to cross the ball, um, assists as well. You know, just quality. Jordan Pickford then. Jordan Pickford. Now, Jordan Pickford is going to be in the surprise category for me. Jordan Pickford um, had a very, very good tournament. I'll put him in the surprise category because I feel like he is a surprise. I mean, you see him for Everton all season. I always find Pickford, he can be a good goalkeeper. He's a good shot stopper, but there's always a mistake in him. This tournament, though, for England, he was absolutely outstanding. Yeah, for Pickford, for me, surprise, big time. I thought... You know, I always think Pickford's got a mistake in him, but this tournament he proved us all wrong, man. He proved me wrong, certainly. And uh, he was very, very good. Made a load of big saves for England, kept them in games. Uh, and it was a big reason that they got to the final as well. So Pickford for me, um, surprise. Declan Rice then. Declan Rice just an average. Um, you know, certain games, he, he, it was, there was games where he had certain spells and games where he did very, very well. I love the way he drives forward with the ball. But as I say, him, him and Phillips, I think, were average for the tournament. They started very well. Dropped a wee bit, but they still maintained a good level of performance throughout. Um, but I wouldn't give them any more than average. So next off, we have Bakayo Saka. Now, we have uh, him. is going to, He's going to surprise instantly. So, surprise again for me. Um, not the surprise because of the me doubting Saka's a good player. I always, like, I'm always believing Saka's a good player. I see him at Arsenal loads of times. He's a very, very, very good player. The reason I say surprise is because he got so much game time. He grabbed that game where he, where he started. The first game of the time he started, I think, was the last 16 game. He played in that. Um, maybe this last 16 or quarter final it might have been. But one of the whenever he got his first start, he took his opportunity. He played really, really well. And was in the team the rest of the way through. So... It surprised me how good Saka was this tournament, how much game play or how much game time he got. Sancho, obviously, new United sign and all that. Um, just awaiting his medical now, it's only a matter of time. But Sancho, uh, yeah, average really. Average really. I can't really say much more for Sancho. He didn't really play much in the tournament. Played well in the quarterfinal against Ukraine when he when he you know when he played. Um, but other than that, didn't really did, you know, he didn't get the game time to show himself more. Right, Raheem Sterling then. Now Raheem Sterling's an interesting one because 
the thing about Raheem Sterling is he can look to be he can play you know if you watch the game on face value you look at the game and you're watching it and you're like Sterling's having a poor game man but he's like Rashford in the sense that he can change a game he might be out of the game for 60 minutes and then instantly he could have a, he could have a big say in the game in terms of a goal a moment of magic creating a goal something like that um, you know Sterling I'd have to give him have to give Sterling um, I'll probably put Sterling in the surprise category um, in the sense that whenever the tournament started so many things were going wrong I thought obviously he did score against Croatia but the thing about Sterling is I don't like the way his goals sometimes hide his poor performances now I know goals win games of course they're very very important but the way you see Sterling games when I watch him it's like sometimes he's so greedy on the ball there's an open pass and he just doesn't see it and he's greedy he goes down a blind alley and gets tackled um, decision making is sometimes a bit like Rashford's because I think, I think Sterling and Rashford are very similar players they're very different players they're very similar players at certain times as well in terms of their decision making you know going all the, go, going all out in their own rather than finding an open pass to a team who's in space you know for an easy goal or, or just a one on one opportunity so um, Sterling did that a lot this tournament very very frustrating to watch him do that but um, his goals don't lie man the stats don't lie his goals you know, for England through the tournament, got them through a lot of games. Um, certainly in the big sand games, as I said, he does. So I'd have to give him a surprise, because I thought, at the start of the tournament, I thought, he's not, you know, this is going to be a poor tournament for Sterling. Prove me wrong. John Stones, yet again, I talked about him earlier with, uh, obviously, partner behind Maguire, but uh, for John Stones, I just gave him average. Had a good tournament, didn't really make any mistakes, really. Um, partner Maguire, they both looked solid enough. Obviously, England only conceded what? Well, up to the final, they only conceded one goal all tournament they only conceded two goals all tournament um so yeah you know the, the it says a lot you know defense they're well they're well organized and Maguire and um, um stones were certainly a big part of that of course here in trippier is the same um played in, in a number of the games but um the thing about trippier is you know what you're getting from him you know if he's got a brilliant delivery um so you know he's very good going forward maybe a bit suspect defensively but um I certainly wouldn't give him anything lower than average. He, he was an average performance in the, in the tournament. Did well when he was on. But um, certainly wouldn't be putting him any higher than average. Now, right, before we get to Gareth Southgate, we do have Kyle Walker. Now, I think Kyle Walker, the other England fullback. Oh, obviously, we had Luke Shaw earlier as world class. Kyle Walker is also going to be in the world class. Um, I think he had a brilliant tournament as well. Now, I've had my doubts about Kyle Walker as well. I used to think he was world class. Then over the last season or two, I thought he's dropped off a bit. Um, you know, I, I find him sometimes he can be a bit rash in the tackle. Sometimes I find he's a bit defensively unaware um, in terms of positioning and stuff like that. There, but this tournament, he was he was top class, man, and that's why he's going into the world class section alongside Roberto Carlos. Into the last one. Now this is Gareth Southgate. Now, so now a lot of talk about Gareth Southgate. We all know. The thing about Gareth Southgate is he is a pragmatic manager, right? But you can't say anything about him getting England to the final. Now, obviously, well, well, I'm going to talk about this on face value first because obviously in the final, we all know the penalty takers shouldn't have been Saka, Sancho and Rashford. Poor decision on that. You know, there should be more experienced players or players that at least were on the pitch for a bit longer. Right, you know, Sancho and Rashford came on, what, with a minute to go? And then they have perspective to get a penalty in England's biggest <laughs> biggest moments, you know, for years. Crazy. Um, so that obviously falls on him. Um... A lot of things, you know, a lot of mistakes that he has made and team selections that people, you know, definitely haven't agreed with. Um, there's no doubt that he is a defensive manager. That goes with his team selections, the, the actual selections for his 26-man squad that he picks. You know, not enough. He, he, he's over-defensive in terms of the, the personnel he chooses. But for this tournament, I feel like overall, if I was rating him out of 10, I'd have to give Southgate probably a 7.5. Um, he certainly surprised me. Um, a, lot of, a lot of, you know... Obviously, I'm not English, but a lot of, I was supporting England for the tournament. A lot of English people was, uh, will probably be in the comments as well. I know of a lot of English viewers. Get your comments in the, in the, in the, in the comments below. Um, you know, what we say on Southgate. I mean, get your comments in it, about every all, all these players. But I'd like to hear specifically on Southgate. What would we say on him? Because for me, I would probably put him towards... I, see, I can't put him in, in, in uh, any of these ones, right? To per or waste of time. I can't even put him in average. I think for Southgate, now I know obviously we bottled the final, he bottled the final, so he's definitely not world class, not a chance he's world class, um, 
But in terms of, I'll put him in the surprise section simply because he did surprise me. So then boys, that will round up today's video. Obviously, Euro 2020 England tier list. Um, rating all the players and Southgate. As you can see, this is where they all stack now. Um, from world class, right down to waste of time. Obviously, get, your, get in the chat. Get in the comments what we're saying about my ratings. Do you agree with them? Do you disagree? Let me know which players you agree with, which players you disagree with. Going to be interesting. I'm sure this video will spark comments and, and debate in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the comments down below. But as I say, that's good. It's good to get comments. It's good to always hear you boys watching the videos interacting as well. So, um, yeah, hope you've enjoyed the video, boys. If you have, make sure to drop a like as well. That would really help the channel out. And, of course, subscribe. We are closing, closing in on 1.5k subscribers. So if you could subscribe and help us out on that, that would be absolutely brilliant as well. But as I say, boys, appreciate everyone tuning in, uh, watching the video, and uh, yeah, get in the comments. Let me know what your thoughts are. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.